Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Kelvin Christopher from That Viva Guy, and here today to give you a short tutorial on keyframing plugins in DaVinci Resolve 16. Stay tuned. So let's dive straight into it. Uh, just a little background. I recently got myself a Blackmagic Design Cinema Pocket Camera 4K and I'm really loving it so far. And I have been learning DaVinci Resolve 16 uh, because as you guys know, it comes free with the software and I'm very impressed with this software. I'm usually a user of Adobe Premiere, After Effects, the whole Adobe suite, but after um, diving into and, and, and exploring the Vinci Resolve, I'm extremely impressed with the color correction and especially the sound. So today, my tutorial is directly geared to Fairlight, which is the audio section of the Vinci Resolve 16, all right? And um, my problem was, I uh, was doing a, a club scene for one of our new films called Side Pieces and I had a song that I needed to, I needed the song to sound like it, the DJ was playing it in the club, okay? And when the dialogue section comes along, I needed the music to lower and increase the reverb time, giving it an effect of an open room um, sound you know, you're in the club, you're hearing the music echoing all over, it's a reverb inside the room, but it gives the main vocals which are in mono space so that you can hear it. My issue was I wasn't able to find how to keyframe effects for plugins, all right? And um, I tried for a couple of days and I, I looked online for some resources and I, I couldn't I couldn't find it, but recently I discovered how to do it after playing around for a few hours. And I decided to make this tutorial to help those who are, who are in the same position as me right now. Um, hopefully this video helps, so let's get straight into it. So here we go. DaVinci Resolve 16 is open. I have it. I'm going to play the scene for you right now that I'm talking about with all the, if, the effects already keyframed. Left to roll. I'm happy I'll be the one seeing you home. And if I've never heard that one before? You should, probably should not follow me to that curve. Alright, so you heard the dialogue just now. Uh, I'm not gonna take that any further because, um, yeah, after this conversation, they get into a heated sex scene in the bathroom. So this is a PG show and I'm gonna keep it that way, all right? <laughs> so let's get into it. How did I keyframe the plugin reverb? Now, my reverb, I, I used um, the native plugin that comes with 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 uh, Resolve, all right, and I insert it in the effects. The culprit is this little button right here, with two keyframe symbols and a curved line. You click on that, then you get your options. Now we're looking like we're heading in the right direction because we have right trim touch on off latch snap on stop and then you can enable to keyframe your fader 
mute, pan, EQ, compressor, gate, you, you name it, auxiliary, miscellaneous. All right, now what I want to show you is plugins. All right, this is plugins right here. Now on your track with your audio, which I have that drink featuring myself and Saskia Griffith is right here. Okay, now ordinarily, you wouldn't really see that symbol here until you click on the on this symbol, this keyframe symbol here. Then it shows up up here now. All right, following me so far. Okay, so it's gonna be off. You have to activate it. When you activate it, you can now click this drop down menu button right here and go to plugins, reverb and then you select the parameter that you want to edit. Now in my case, I already made my experiments and I played around with my wheels and realized that reverb time, distance, brightness, creates the effect that I want. Now today, I'm not gonna show you all three, but reverb time is what I want to show. Now there are two different ways you can do this. You can either set your reverb time here to one thing or you can use the output dry wet as a general overall um, edit modification if you will okay but right now i'm just gonna do reverb time i'm gonna play this again now as this is activated and it's the color red this again and click on it this happens look carefully the top of the audio waveform turns red there's a red line at the top that means you're ready to record if you take this off it turns to green that means it's in read mode now one thing I learned is if you have already recorded your keyframes what you want and you click again you're in danger of erasing your data that is already there all right so you if you scrub or if you play it while this is on it will overwrite okay so be careful with that so right now the red is activated I'm ready to do my record my keyframe I'm just gonna shift this over a little bit because I just want to see the reverb time right here okay so for this scene all I need is for I'm gonna take this off so as you can see all the knobs turn back green they were red a while ago let me show you red for record green for read now it's in green I'm gonna set the amount of reverb time that I really need for majority of this scene giving me enough reverb to emulate a club okay If I was to mute this track, that's all you'd hear. Crowd, chatter, noise, and if I mute the crowd and chatter, it's nothing. Okay? Nothing. <laughs> so, basically, the crowd and chatter noise um, is fake, you know? That's how it is in the real movie in uh, real movies okay so anybody that thought that um, all the sound was recorded on the set uh, not all the time so I got my crowd noise I got my music here gonna put this back on all right now we sound like we're in a club right all right so as you can hear in the background there's a little bit of Key framing that happened because it's in read mode. Now I'm gonna put it in write mode. All right, 
so now my the section where I need to modify is right here. You can see the volume keyframes are right here on the screen. Okay, so I'll take it back a little bit. Now, because I stopped, it automatically went back into read mode. To get it back into write mode, I'm going to deactivate the keyframe symbol and turn it back on. Is that really your first line? Left to wrong. I'm happy I'll be the one seeing you home. And if I've never heard that one before? Then you should, probably should not follow me to that curve. There you go. There you go. Slipped into the sex scene. But anyway, um, all right. So it's now in read mode. I'm going to head back a little bit and see if that worked. Line? Left to wrong. I'm happy I'll be the one taking you home. And if I've never heard that one before? Then you should, probably should not follow me through that curve. Yep, there you go. And uh, folks, that's how you keyframe um, your plugins in Freelight and Blackmagic designed DaVinci Resolve 16. I hope uh, that you got some information. I'm learning about DaVinci Resolve still, uh, still exploring and hopefully we'll learn more. And I do watch tutorials from other YouTubers on online and I learn a lot every day, but this was one of the tutorials that I could not find. And when I discovered uh, how to do it, I decided to make a video so that you guys uh, can do it as well. All right, remember to like and subscribe to this channel. Click the notification bells. I got way more tutorials coming up for you, especially in color grading, because um, I color grade uniquely to everyone else, and I want to teach you how to color grade. Um, yeah, maybe you might learn something from me. You never know. All right. A lot of people are afraid of nodes. Don't be afraid of the nodes. Embrace the nodes. All right. Until next time, your boy Kelvin Christopher signing out on that Viva guy. Peace. Yes, the sexy. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. All right.